Hello, everybody, and welcome to Skills on Sunday. I'm your host, DM Galabond. Today is Sunday, May 10th, 2020. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And today we're going to be looking at the skill of animal handling as it exists in 5th edition. So let's go ahead and get on with that. Now, animal handling, uh, this one we are looking at specifically at the skill of animal handling and not any kind of magic, either spells or potions or magic items that give you the ability to control animals. And um, so animal handling as a skill, that's defined as, you know, if there's a situation where you need to calm down a domesticated animal, keep them out from getting spooked, or even intuit the uh, reactions of a wild animal, you can do a wisdom check, uh, animal handling, and uh, it also is the same kind of check, animal handling, that you do when you want to do a risky maneuver with your mount. So, like, if you're trying to force your mount to jump over a uh, dangerous uh, chasm, or if you're trying to push your mount uh, to ride fast through difficult conditions or uh, on a long ride uh, for an extended period of time, an animal handling check can help you uh, do that. So uh, animal handling, and like a lot of other skills in 5th edition, it's a wide basket of uh, situations where it comes into play. And what we want to do today is go back and look through the history of the game and see what some of the predecessors are. So in case there's a situation that comes up in your game and you're not sure whether animal handling applies, maybe knowing how the skill has been used in the past will kind of help you figure out how to apply it or how to use it in uh, the present day. So similar skills have existed all the way back to uh, the original rules of D&D. In the uh, optional rules for skills in original D&D, there was animal training. And so this was a little bit more like the uh, domesticated animal part of it, but a little bit more in depth on that than the current handle animal is. Uh, so if you take skill in the animal training, you know how to raise, train, and care for one specific type of animal. And the animal can be taught some simple tricks or simple orders. character who wants to train two or more different animal types must choose the skill more than once. So horse training is one skill, while dog training is another. Uh, and then it goes into, you know, you can use horse training to cover training any kind of horse from a you know a thoroughbred to a draft horse uh, it does you don't have to get granular into taking different types of training even though we know in the real world uh, the training that you would do for a draft horse and a uh, thoroughbred is very very different because they're um, they've got very very different types of jobs that they do and uh, the same goes for dogs. Uh, if you train a dog, it doesn't matter whether it's a dachshund or a pit bull or a Great Dane in uh, D&D, uh, taking animal training for dogs covers all of it. All right, so there wasn't a whole lot said about uh, training of animals in first edition or AD&D. But when we get to 2nd edition, they introduce the idea of non-weapon proficiencies. And lo and behold, animal handling shows up in 2nd edition. And this says, proficiency in this area enables a character to exercise greater than normal degree of control over pack animals and beasts of burden. So now you're going back to a little bit closer to what 5th edition is doing, because it Beasts of burden, that's going to entail domesticated animals, basically. 
And pack animals, that's going to be more wild animals like wolves or those types of things where where they look wild animals that may look to an alpha as a leader. Uh, the successful proficiency check indicates the character has succeeded in calming an excited or agitated animal. Or uh, if you don't have the skill, you only have a 20% chance of succeeding in the attempt. Uh, and so that gives you a little bit more insight into what you can do, uh, especially in uh, in the ways of dealing with a uh, with a wild animal there. All right. So then, if we go into third edition, we have uh, handle animals, uh, and it's a charisma skill. Now, remember, in fifth edition, it's a wisdom skill. But it was a charisma skill in um, third edition, and you know you can use this to drive a team of horses pulling a wagon over a, a rough terrain, uh, teach a dog to guard, or teach a tyrannosaurus to speak on your command. Uh, so, you know, the then there's different tasks that you want to try to try to do. Uh, Handle an animal is DC 10. Push an animal is DC 25. Teach an animal a trick is 15 or 20. Um, and then train an animal for a general purpose, also 15 or 20. And then rear a wild animal is 15 plus the hit dice of the animal. So uh, then these are the general purpose uh training that you could do uh train it for combat riding fighting guarding hunting performance or riding uh and then pushing an animal means to get it perform a task or trick it doesn't know but is physically capable of performing uh and that also covers making an animal perform a forced march so now we're getting back to like we were saying in fifth edition where you need to try to push your mount to keep going for an extended period of time. And then teaching an animal a trick. Uh, there are several different types of tricks. You know, attack is a trick. Uh, come, defend, uh, lie down, or um, stand down, basically. Uh, the down command means stop attacking. Fetch, uh, guard, heal, perform, seek, stay, whatever. Uh, track those types of things so uh, and as you can see this goes this goes very in depth uh, into all of the very various different types of things that you can do and this was one of both the good things and the bad things about uh, third edition is that third edition tried to be so granular and tried to cover so many different situations that in the inevitable time that they didn't have a rule to cover a specific situation, a lot of DMs and players just felt lost uh, because they were spoon feeding every, uh, you know, everything to them written down in black and white. Um, because that's what people in second edition said they wanted with third is, well, we need more, we need more. Uh, but it really kind of became then a straitjacket because they tried to anticipate and create a rule for every uh, conceivable circumstance. And when you're playing a game that's based on imagination, these things come up that you just cannot, uh, you cannot anticipate when you're writing a set of rules. So uh, fifth edition, therefore, has drawn back from that a little bit, made it a little bit more general, and then put the power back into the hands of the player and the DM to work together and say, okay, this is what you want to do. Which of these skills is going to be appropriate for doing that? All right, and then as we look at fourth edition, uh, in fourth edition, there was the uh, nature skill, and actually animal handling was a uh, specific part of the nature skill. So nature skill, you picked up uh, skills 
uh, you know, uh, related to um, living off the land and surviving in nature uh, and those types of things. Among them are foraging and, oh, hey, handling animals. So uh, you make a nature check to calm down a natural beast, teach a natural beast some tricks, or otherwise handle a natural beast. And handling a natural beast is usually part of a skill challenge that requires a number of successes. So uh, that they had that concept of the skill challenge where you had to have uh, X many successes before you had Y number of failures. And usually it required more successes than failures. And based on what you were trying to accomplish, uh, you would uh, set the DC or the, the DM would set the DC or the difficulty class, what threshold you had to meet on your uh, D20 rolls to uh, succeed in those different checks. So that's a little bit about uh, how animal handling has existed through the editions of D&D and how it's changed over the editions. All right, well, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, uh, then it would be awesome if uh, you could go ahead and down in the um, down in the uh, in the bottom there over on the side, if you could click that subscribe button, uh, click the bell, that'll let you know when we post new content to the channel. Uh, also, if there are specific skills that you uh, would like us to go over you can put those in the comments or if you have any ideas about animal handling or things that you think that uh, I left out or that should be added to the conversation go ahead and throw those into the comments as well uh, really appreciate it hey I hope everybody has a wonderful Mother's Day uh, especially you know treat your mom well uh, do the dishes uh, take her out to a nice brunch well no, you can't do that this year. Sorry about that. Uh, normally, you could take her out to a nice brunch. But, you know, hopefully you have a chance to spend some time with your mom. If not, give her a call on Zoom. Uh, let her see your smile and uh, tell her how much you miss her. Uh, so, uh, with that, just want to uh, wish everybody a happy Sunday. And uh, we will talk to you uh, later and that'll be it for us for today good night everybody